Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at the fact that for the last thousand years, the same families have owned most of England. Shortly after the Normans conquered England in 1066, their monarch, William, seized control of all the lands, then divided up control among those soldiers and nobles who helped him defeat the Anglo-Saxons, and keeping a fair bit for himself. However, as dramatic as that was, it is even more shocking that today most of Britain remains in the hands of the descendants of those early Norman conquerors. Early England and the Conquest by the turn of the 11th century, England was a mosaic of Celtic, Anglo-Saxon, Danish, and Norman. The Anglo-Saxon, Ethelred the Unready, initially held the throne but lost it twice to others, and was ultimately succeeded by the Danish King Canute in 1016, with some of Ethelred's sons, including Edward, fleeing to Normandy. After the Danish line ended, Edward the Confessor took the throne in 1042, although the king was under the thrall of the powerful Godwins, and near the end of his reign, Harold Godwinson in particular. Edward died childless and was succeeded by Harold, now Harold II, but the Normans claimed that he had promised the throne to William of Normandy. To make matters worse, the Norwegian Harald, with an A, Hardrada, also sought the English throne with his claim based on agreements between his predecessor and Canute. In the fall of 1066, Harold, with an A, invaded in the north and Harold defeated him, but then had to quickly head south to meet William, who had invaded with his well-trained army of knights and crossbowmen. The poorly equipped Anglo-Saxons were no match for the Normans, and England was soon conquered. Land grab. The very first thing William did after he took the English throne was to declare in 1067 that all lands, which had previously been in the hands of many landowners, belonged exclusively to him. He then instituted feudalism, where he began to parcel out land to the loyal soldiers who helped him win the throne. That brings us to today. According to The Guardian, 70% of Britain's land remains in the hands of less than 1% of its population, with a mere 160,000 families owning 66% of it. More troubling, Queen Elizabeth II remains the nominal owner of every bit of land in England, and every landowner is technically just a tenant who pays rent in the form of loyalty. This is not the only vestige of the Norman Conquest, as the descendants of those early invaders, with names today like Darcy, Percy, Montgomery, and Mandeville, remain significantly wealthier, at least 10%, than those who descend from Anglo-Saxon stock. Furthermore, Norman descendants also enjoy other privileges, including attendance at the best universities. In a recent study that examined the enrollment at Cambridge and Oxford over the last 1,000 years, it was revealed that at certain times, Norman names were 800% more common at Oxford than in the general population, and more recently, were at least twice as likely to be found in that institution's enrollment. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and I don't know if you know it, but I do have a couple of other channels that you might also enjoy if you enjoyed this one. At the top is a channel where I present top tens lists. It's called Top Tens Net, and definitely click there to check that out. And also, if you're interested in the life of a YouTube creator, then click on the link below that on that thumbnail right there, because that is over to my personal vlog, where I vlog every day about my life as a YouTube creator. So be sure to check both of those out, and thank you for watching.